Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now on question number eight from the IGCSE paper for um, 0580, <clears throat> the paper for variant one from May, June 2020. And this question here is about trigonometry. So the first question, we are told to sketch on the axes the graph of y equals sine x or theta between 0 and 360. Okay, so <coughs> we should know what the sine curve looks like. Now, if you forget what it looks like, it's not such a big issue in terms of the values because you can just, in your calculator, type in the sine of 0 degrees and you'll see, your calculator should be in, in radian mode, it will come out as 0 and the sine of 90 degrees, the calculator will give 1. So there's this point over here. The sine of 180 degrees will be 0 again. The sine of 270 degrees will be negative 1. And the sine of 360 degrees will be 0 again. So it's going to be a curve that has this type of shape between 0 and 360. So I'm going to try and do it as neat as I can with what I've got here. So you've got this sine curve that looks something like that, which is maximum at 1. It goes through 180 and then it reaches its minimum at minus 1 and then it goes through 360 okay <laughs> it's not that well drawn <coughs> I'm sorry it's not that well drawn but we can fix it a little bit <clears throat> that part is quite nice this part not so nice so it goes through 180 and then it comes down and it reaches its minimum point at minus 1 let me fix up this part over here so it goes through its minimum point of minus 1. Okay, something like that would be fine. That's y equals sine, uh, sine x. <clears throat> and there we have the answer to 8a part 1. That should be fine as your answer. Now, <coughs> for part 2, it says describe fully the symmetry of the curve y equals sine x between 0 and 360. Now, this curve in this region here, between 0 and 360, you can see it's symmetrical in terms of it has rotational symmetry. If you rotated this through 180 degrees, this side will fit exactly over there. So it's going to fit over itself altogether two times in one revolution. But it has no line symmetry in this region here. If it was between 0 and 180, yes, it would have line symmetry about the line x equals 90. But here, between 0 and 360, there's no line symmetry. But there is rotational symmetry. So we can say that it has no line symmetry. When they tell you to describe fully the symmetry, you should mention something about both types of symmetry. So no line symmetry. But you can say that it has rotational symmetry of order 2. That means every, every 180 degrees it fits over itself. So rotational symmetry of order 2. Okay, that's a full answer to this. You should mention something about both of those types of symmetry. And we're only <coughs> talking about between 0 and 360 degrees. Okay, now for part B. So solve for sine x minus 1 equals 2 for values of x between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. So when you want to solve an, a trig equation like this, what we must do first is we must make the, like here, okay, the sine x the subject of this equation. Okay, so the, the trig ratio must be made the subject. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of the minus 1. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. That gives me 4 sine x equals 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, by 4, sorry. So I end up with sine x equals 3 quarters. So now I have made sine x the subject of this formula. I can go on to solve this equation. So... I'm going to just go back to the graph so I can illustrate what I'm going to be explaining now. So sine x equals 3 quarters. We want to find where the sine x, the, the curve y equals sine x, and the, and the line y equals 3 quarters, where they intersect in this range of values of x. So if I was to draw the line y equals 3 quarters on the same axis here, so like that's about a half, that's about three quarters. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. illustrating to you. It'll be like something like this. Okay, that's y equals three quarters. 
That's the line, say y equals 3 over 4. Now I can see that there are two places within our range here at which the curve and this line intersect. And one of them is over here. And we can see there's another one over here. Now how do I find these two points? How do I find these two angles where the cur curve of y equals sine uh, x and y equals 3 quarters intersect? That's what we have to basically find. Our solutions to this equation, uh, sine x is equal to 3 quarters, are basically this angle here and this angle here. That's where sine x equals 3 quarters within the range of 0 to 360 degrees. All right, so basically the first angle we can find by using our calculator. Okay, this first angle we can find by using our calculator. The calculator will give us what's called the principal solution, which is the one that's closest to zero, you could say. Okay, that's actually something a bit more um, involved than that, but just for now we can just say that. It gives us what's called the principal solution. So we say inverse sine of 3 over 4. Now, what you should always do, in fact, before you start your whole exam for IGCSE, is make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So, in case it isn't, shift, in this calculator, shift, menu, angle unit, which is number two, and then degree mode is one. So, just make sure it's in degree mode, because you're telling the calculator, please, calculator, give me the answer in degrees, and not in radians or gradients, whatever. So, we want the answer in degrees, so we will find, we're telling the calculator, tell us what is the angle, for which the sine ratio is 3 over 4. Okay, and it gives us 48.590. So this angle is 48.590. That's this first angle here. Now, we have to find what this other angle is, right? And what the calculator does not do is tell us the other angle. The calculator does not tell us this other angle. All right, it will only give us this principal angle. So we have to use our understanding of the symmetry of the sine curve in order to find this other angle. And in this case, we can see quite clearly there's a symmetry, like you could say y equals or x equals 90 degrees is what's called a line of symmetry of this curve. Okay, if I was to draw a line through this point here, through this, through 90 degrees, okay, the curve is symmetrical about that line. Okay, so you can say that, you know, this would fold or, you know, if you fold it along this line, this side should fit over the other if it was drawn 100% accurately. So I know then that this distance between these two points, okay, the distance between these two points, okay, let me just uh, make it a bit more clear. Okay, the distance between these two points here, these two points, sorry, between the angle and zero, and the distance between 180 and this angle, they should be the same distance. They should be the same distance. This is not straight, is it? Let's straighten this out. Okay, they should be the same distance. Okay, so that is that is 45.590. So that must also be 45.590, that distance here. So this is 45 point, sorry, 48 point. This is 48.590 more than zero, and this, this is 48.590 less than 180. For, for the sine curve, what we do is we take um, the main angle that the calculator gave us, and we do 180 minus the angle, and that gives us the other main angle, which is 131. 0 0.4096 131.4096 I'm not rounding it until the end I'll round it to the to the correct accuracy at the end okay so these are the two solutions for which what sine of x is equal to 3 quarters okay 48.590 and 131.4096 now you don't really have to look at the sine curve every time you answer a question like this but you should know the, the symmetry of the curve and should know how we can use that to find solutions, all right? And with the sine curve, you find the main solution by finding the, the inverse sine of the ratio, which is inverse sine of three quarters. That gives you the principal solution. 
and there's always another solution which is 180 minus that and we already learned that when we did um, um, in trigonometry when we're finding a question where they say find the um, obtuse angle in this triangle this is obtuse find the obtuse angle whatever and the calculator gives us an acute angle uh, we know that we have to do 180 minus that acute angle to give us the obtuse angle all right the calculator won't give us the obtuse angle it'll give us the acute angle we've got to do 180 minus that to find it so when we solve this equation the calculator we press inverse sine of three quarters and it gave us our first value which is 48.590 And then we did 180 minus the calculate uh, value, which gave us 131.4096, which gave us 131.4096. And what we have to do in the end is round our answers to one decimal place. So we have 48.6 degrees and 131.4 degrees. Those are the two solutions, okay, within our range, okay? So that's how you solve trig equations, okay, within a given range. You first make the trig equate the trig uh, function or the trig the um, trig ratio like sine x or cosine x or tan x, you make it the subject inverse sine in this case of 3 quarters and that that first angle is your calculator answer. The next angle will be 180 minus your calculator answer. Okay, that's how you deal with the sine curve. For the cosine curve, it would be, of course, inverse cosine of the ratio and then 360 minus that. Why? Because the cosine curve has this kind of shape between 0 and 360. And the symmetry is like here. So this angle, this is 360 degrees, this is 0 degrees, this is 180 degrees. So if, the, if you find an angle like the calculator, it will give you this angle. 360 minus the angle will give you the other angle where they share the same cosine ratio. And for the tan curve, you just simply find the first angle you're using your calculator and then keep adding 180 to it until you're out of your range. So the tan curve looks something like this. It just repeats every 180 degrees. It just keeps repeating. right? So if you find this angle, this angle is 180 degrees more than this angle. So you can find the angles like that for the tan curve. So it's quite simple, the tan curve, to solve trig equations with it. The curve looks a bit strange compared to the other two, but finding the angles is a bit easier. Okay, so there we have 8a and b. Okay, these, these questions are on the topic of trigonometry. Now the next question is on the topic of drawing graphs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this question um, on a separate um, video and part part B, part C, I'm going to support on a separate video because they're two different topics. So then I can split this video, split this up into two, um, you know, into the playlist for the, those two topics to make it more organized. So part C of this of this question you will find in the the next video. Okay. So other questions that you want to find from this paper, you'll find in the playlist which will be placed over here, including part C. And other questions from this topic of trigonometry, um, you can find in this playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching. See you soon.